Hello. Nice to see you all here. As usual, it's another gorgeous day here in Bakersfield. You should be seeing out the window that I have here. Big, white, puffy clouds, big blue sky. It's just gorgeous. So we meet again. My name is Suzanne Bryan, and this is a live stream. And I'm going to be discussing finer details of the schematics and moving into creating a sloper. In fact, I have my sloper on, and I'll talk about more about it when we get to it. Okay, so let's see who's here. I always love seeing everybody. Be sure to give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button. Um, that helps move me up in the statistics with YouTube and shows my videos to more people. So we have Judith Andres. And if you have a question, be sure to put your question in all caps. And she asked the question right off, and she said, Is boot camp virtual, or do you need to travel someplace to attend to participate? It's virtual, just like this. It's not uh, through YouTube, though. I do it via Zoom, and I create a private Facebook page for each boot camp group for them to post their homework and me to critique their homework and give uh, personal guidance on their knitting. Hi, Sherry. Hello. And she's going to be in my next boot camp class. And she's a master knitter. So it's for everybody. It's for people who've just started knitting uh, to people who've been knitting for many, many years and are very advanced. Everyone will get something from the boot camp. Elaine, hello. Lizanne, Jackie Rickles. And Judith is back again. Sherry, Judith, Jerry Rossiter. I just got her payment for boot camp. Yay! Fatima, Carolyn Finnerman, uh, Linda, Trevster, hello, from Spain, Kathleen Crab, Cat B, Mary Topita, uh, Sidra Goldsmith, Sophie, Mary. Lizanne again, Judith, Elizabeth Nelson, hello, Susan, Champ Smith, Belinda Drabble, uh, Joan Mello, Duke of Nico, Arlette, Garcia, Elaine, Chris Hoffman, Catherine Ecat Karsten, a 37 Viga Lira, that's a great name, Kayan, uh, Amy Hazuda, Deb Rohrbach, um, Kelly Mycat, Joanne, Sylvia, Diane Joel, Katharina, Roxanne, Marlene, Sue McVicker, Vera Hunt, people from all over the world. Very, very fun. Um, Raju is from Nairobi, Kenya. De Verte from Boise, Idaho. Margaret from the Netherlands. Very, very fun. Welcome, everybody. Today we are really going to get into the nitty gritty part of the schematic. Up until now, we've just been gathering our information and figuring out what numbers that we need to use for our schematic. So I'm going to go through the whole process first, and then you can ask your questions, okay? So I'm going to start out um, by showing sharing my hands, okay? We'll go right to, I'm going to show you parts. This is one of the pages it's called my body schematics and I'm using these numbers to use as the example this is a, a real person I'm going to use her numbers to show you how to draw a schematic so I have that worksheet filled out and then I drew her numbers onto the little worksheets which are now big so I have all of my numbers on here but these it's just the numbers. This is what we've been doing so far, just figuring out the numbers, what goes where, and um, but it's not really a schematic that's relative to our size. It's just a sample schematic. So we're going to be taking this information and putting it on a real schematic. Then I filled out the arm side worksheet for this person, so now I understand the uh, under uh, the armhole better. And I wanted to um, share this from the tutorial. By the way, if you're not, uh, this is a tutorial that I have available on Ravelry. It's called It Takes a Guild, ITAG, I -T -A -G, which stands for It Takes a Guild. And then it's a set in sleeve 
sweater knit along tutorial and I'm teaching you how to create a garment that fits you perfectly starting from a swatch and your measurements and then you're going to create your schematic which is what we're in the process of doing now and then you're going to create a sloper which is what I have on and I'll talk about in a few more minutes <clears throat> and then create your pattern from your schematic and knit. So this is an example of just a schematic like this one, a, a generic schematic, okay? It's just very similar to this, just different shape. It's just the top portion, like this, just showing the armholes. But generally, when you're designing a schematic, you start with the shoulder width, and then you add the bust width in half the bust circumference. And you draw a straight line straight down and create the curve, the underarm curve. Well, for people who are have a uh, skeleton, for example, this person's across the shoulder width is 16 inches, so her skeletal frame is medium, but she has a larger bust on her medium skeletal frame. So you can't really come down and go out like this or she'll have these huge, enormous underarm areas, which are not going to be very attractive. So what I've been teaching so far up to this point, we've been learning how to adjust the arm side to reflect the wider bust. Because up here, she's going to need more fabric in this area right here, isn't she? to accommodate her bust. Her shoulders don't need to be wider. And this is what you'll find in commercial garments. In commercial garments, in order to accommodate a wider bust, they also make wider shoulders. So you'll see the shoulder seam hanging off the edge of the shoulder. We're going to make ours so that our shoulder seam is where it ought to be. And then we're going to adjust the arm side, which we've already been learning, to accommodate that larger bust, but not have a huge underarm area. So we've already done all of these calculations. I'm just reviewing that and showing you, and all the little numbers are in here is how to, <coughs> excuse me, I may get a drink of water. And there are other various worksheets and diagrams in the tutorial to show you how you arrive at these numbers. But I wanted to explain that because that's this is where we're taking off from this point right here. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to use this person's information that we've been calculating, and I'm going to put it on one fourth inch graph paper. And I'm going to follow these steps, which are in the um, portion of the tutorial, which is going to be coming out um, today or tomorrow. So we're going to start. This is in the steps that you'll be getting. You're going to use this quarter inch graph paper. So let me get a ruler. You can see that here is an inch and four of these squares equal one inch and four squares high equal one inch. So this is called one-fourth inch graph paper or one-fourth scale because it's going to be two scale. And I think this is 32 35. This is 37 squares wide and plenty long. So uh, it, the person could be up to 37. That would be 60, 70, 4 inches in circumference chest. And you could still draw their front and back schematic on here. So we're going to start out. Step one is we find a place near the top in the center and make a mark. We just want to find the center. And I'm going to use a pencil. And I'm just going to draw in, I'm going to trace a line down the center just so it's a reference point. So there's my center. Okay. Then I'm going to uh, look at the back neck width for this person. It's 5.25 inches. And I can use my ruler. And so it's going to be 5 quarters because it's five inches, there's a quarter inch for each inch, five and one-fourth inches. So we can center that. It's going to be right here. So it's be five. It's going to be right here. Okay. 
and that's going to be the back neck. So we can go ahead and draw the back neck in, just make a line there. That's the starting point. We've started our schematic. Then we're going to uh, we're going to allow for shoulder shaping, and we've already determined how steep our shoulder shaping is. For this person, I'm going to say that their shoulder shaping, the slope of the shoulder is going to be one inch, and I know her back shoulder width is 16.5. So if there's four quarters to an inch, I would be four inches, four and a half inches. So we would center this on two and a quarter. And this would be the shoulders. That's the shoulder width. Her shoulder width is 16.5. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Oh, we're off by, we want it to be here. So that's going to be 2. See, it's a good thing to check. It's going to be right here. right here is the shoulder me measurement. So we're going to draw a line from that to the edge of the neck and this represents the shoulder, the slope of the shoulder. And we'll be figuring out stitch and row gauge um, in the next week or so. So now we have our two shoulders. Then we're going to keeping this line the next thing we're going to do is um, measure down from the edge of each shoulder to half of the armhole depth. Now our arm her armhole depth is 16, so we're going to measure down 8 inches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's her armhole depth, and we're going to put the same thing on the other side. That's the armhole depth. At the level of the armhole depth, we want to put half the bust chest circumference if your front and back chest are the same. Okay, so her bust chest is 50.5, so we're going to want 25.25. So this is going to give us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, point two five, half of that. So now we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Nope, see, so I've got to count. We want twenty point twenty-five. 0.25. So 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 25.25 is going to be right here on my ruler. So that's going to be 3 right here. is going to be her half of her bust chest circumference. So that's 25.25 right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. right here. I'm going to double check. I've double checked my numbers. I have learned from experience that doing a live stream video and doing math in my head don't mix. So I want to have, it's going to be 6.31 inches. It's right here. 
6.31 divided by 2, 3.15, right here. That's going to be, so we can draw a line now from our underarm depth out to here. And this represents the width of half of the bust chest circumference. This is the shoulder width. And you can see for this person, there's quite a difference. And if we were to draw the standard armhole shaping in here, it would look like this, and she would have this huge, huge underarm area. So instead, we have to create the slope. And we did this mathematically already, and I'm going to use those numbers. So I'm going to use the numbers from the example that's already in the um, handout. So this is going to be 1.5 inches here, and 1.5 inches here, this is the curve, this is actually the straight area right here, and then we're going to have the 1.5 inches, the curve, straight, 1.5 inches curve, and 1.5 inches curve. So this is the slope right here. And then you're going to come down, usually most people's shoulders are about two inches thick, so you're gonna come straight down there. And then you would connect these two lines. That's our new arm side compared to this over here. This is going to allow more fabric in the bust area. Then the next thing we're going to do is determine where is the waist. So we need the back neck to waist length, and for her it's 17.5. So that would be four, go down, one, two, three, four, right here. That designates the back waist. We're just going to Make a line that connects to here and here. It's just temporary and here. So this is the area where the waist is going to be, and I've just made some marks there. We're going to be changing that shortly. Then we will also want to know the back neck to the hip, and I'm sorry I can't magnify this bigger to get the whole thing on here, but back neck to hip is 23. So that would be almost 6. So that is, this is at 23 inches right here. This one is at 17.5, okay? And then we want to know her hip plus ease. And hers is 54.5, so I'm going to use 27.25 divided by four. Six point eight one inches. So we're going to point eight, that would be two point six. Six point eight would be It's going to be approximately here where the hips are. This is approximate. You have to remember I'm 
live streaming and doing math at the same time. So now we can see that her hips are wider than the bust width. So we will need to accommodate here, and we're going to talk about that in a minute also. So we can draw, we're going to draw a line straight down from the edge of the bust to the weight and the waist, and then we're going to draw a line out to the hip. And this is not the final, but this is the beginning of the final. So now we're beginning to get our schematic. Okay? Imagine that this side looks like this side. So now we've got, this is the front. Now we want to figure out, do we want to bu put bust shaping in here? And this lady does want to have some bust shaping. So we need to figure out how far down the bust is from the top and how wide the bust point. So the bust point's four point, uh, nine inches wide and it's the depth is 14. So we're going to mark down 14. One, two, three. Since it's 14 would be two, two, six, eight, 12, nine, 10, 10, 12. right here. So 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 9 inches apart, so it's going to be 4 and a half. So you can put marks here. So if she wanted to add bust shaping, you can see her bust is down on her body. Some people, their bust is up here. This is why it's important to know where your bust is. If she wants to add bust shaping, let's say we want to add two inches of bust shaping. We would start about one inch outside the width of the butt bust. It's right here. We'd start one inch out and we're going to draw a line. We're going to add two inches of bust shaping. We do not want the bust shaping to come to the bust point. That does not look good. And we're going to add two inches, so we're going to come down two boxes. Does this remind you of anything? Does it look like a dart when you're sewing? And where the short rows are going to be, when you knit this, the short rows are going to be in this area here. This is going to add the extra fabric in here. Okay? Now, we, when we put this together, we're going to be minus these two inches here because there's not going to be any knitted fabric here. So we have to drop down and add two inches to the front of this diagram to compensate for the loss where we're taking out the fabric right here. We're adding the fabric just in the center. So we're going to draw this down another two inches. Now you worry because you know on the back you are not going to have bust shaping. But because this is negative area, there's nothing going to be in here. This is negative area. It's very hard to, to comprehend this until you knit your sloper, the negative area. This part of the knitting is actually going to be connected to this part. So the total length goes from here to here and then from here to here. This is not accounted for in the length because we're only adding length to the front section under the bust. Okay? Now let's talk about that also moves the waist down, doesn't it? So now the waist, instead of being here, is going to be here. Let's see, it's, it's going to be here. The waist is going to come down to here. Let's say we want to add some waist shaping also. The standard waist shaping is subtracting four inches from the width of the, subtracting four inches from the circumference, circumference of the bust. So it would be subtracting two inches from the width 
of the bust. So if we would subtract one inch from each side, so we're going to bring this in one inch to here and one inch to here. That's going to be our new waist. And the actual waist area is about an inch of area. Like think of a belt going around your body. If you were not a large busted person like this with a lower bust, you could have waist shaping above the waistline and below the waistline. For this particular person, we don't need waist shaping up here because it would interfere with the bust. But we are going to add waist shaping here. So here's our one inch coming in from the side. We're not going to come in one inch this way, but what we are going to do is add We're going to come in uh, half an inch. We're going to alter it. We're going to come in half an inch, but then we'll go out for the hip or no way shaping at all in this instance because of the bust. Now, not all of us are uh, 16 years old with uh, our bust up here. Many of us have a lower bust like this, and this is why I wanted to use a real person for an example. So we're pretty much done with our front schematic. What have we left out? We've left the neck out. Um, for a crew neck, the average crew neck depth is three inches. So you would come down three inches here. And here's the edge. So you would just draw freehand a neckline in. Now, in most cases, you're going to have a ribbing or trim around your neck. I like to have about an inch of ribbing around my neck, so I would draw my ribbing in also. And again, this is going to be negative area because you're not going to put the neck on until after you've finished the garment. That's the trim, right? Goes on last. So this is not included in the fabric that you're going to be using for your schematic. This is where you're, you're going to use this line right here. Now if it's a v-neck, it's the same thing. You start at the back neck and you draw a line down to the depth that you want the top of your v to be, and then you add in that ribbing because you don't want to knit all the way up to this edge. There would be nowhere to add your neck edging. If you were knitting a vest, same thing. You would add, because you're going to put trim around the armhole, or if you're doing a tank top, you're going to have trim, right? So that's where your trim would go, and you would not knit this. This would be added on after you finished the main body of your work. Any questions about the front? If you want to ask a question about this, say question front schematic, because I'm going to move on to the uh, back and sleeve. Oh yes, today is the first day of spring, isn't it? It's just so beautiful out. How many people do we have on here? Everybody give thumbs up. Kayan Tong asks, could you recommend books even only on sewing, on arm size and body adjustment? I don't know of any knitting books that give really good arm size adjustment. Um, but I have, um, I like, let's see. I'll have to think about it, and I'll, I'll uh, post it underneath the video later on. Let's see. I'm probably going to miss some. Okay, Nina says, question, front schematic. What is your question, Nina? Chris Hoffman said, oh, I don't understand why the one on the right side has the armhole slanted in. This one here? 
this is the right side or the right front as you'd be wearing it. This is not slanted in. It's coming straight down. This would be, um, let me show you a standard schematic. This is what a standard schematic looks like. Let me show you in a book. This is in uh, Bud's handy book of top-down sweater patterns. Let's look at schematics for a set-in sleeve. Okay. Do you see here the schematic? Do you see any adjustment there for a wide bust? No. The armhole's coming straight down. Do you see that? Even for a very wide 52 and a half inch circumference body, it shows it coming straight down. And in all of the instructions in here for making it to for knitting it, the numbers come straight down. I don't I haven't seen anywhere, but most of the information that I am using is from my sewing experience and from fitting a lot of my friends with knitted garments. So we don't want to do this. If you're the if you're a a, a model type person, a young person, um, and your this works for you, that's great. But for most of us, it doesn't. For most of us, we're going to be using something like this. Okay. So let's see. There was another question. Um, this was from Chris Hoffman. What's the average depth for a men's V-neck? I think it's about three inches. But, you know, check on a garment. Look on a man's garment. And if you have to uh, get one out of the closet or... Um, it's hard to say to go to the store now and measure one, but that's what you can do. Or you can look at um, pictures of them and get an idea. Another thing that I do, actually, let me show my face. Let me come back up to me. Is I put something on and then I measure. I see where do I want the neck to be? Do I want the neck to be right here? And I look at myself. Where do I want the neck to be? And then you measure from that lowest point up to the top of your neck right here. Remember last week we were talking about where is the top of the shoulder? Right here. It's not up to here, not up to here. It's here where the, your side of your neck comes down and meets the highest point of your shoulder. That's the top of your shoulder. So you measure that distance. So you would do something like this. So I put my ruler there and come down to here. Uh, that's four inches. That's four inches on me. So a v-neck for a man's t-shirt often comes right here, like this, because they don't necessarily want their v coming down exposing part of their chest. So usually it comes right to the base of the neck, and that's usually about three inches. That's the top of the v after you've added the trim. So the trim is usually an inch, so your schematic would come down another inch and your v would be like this. Okay, um, I don't understand why the one on the right side has the armhole slanted. So let me go back to that. And you may, Nina, you may not need a slanted armhole. The reason this one is slanted here, let me shrink it back down, is because this person's chest is much wider than their shoulder width. And I have learned that if you've match the shoulder width to your body. The rest of the garment hangs from your shoulders. It looks really, really nice. In commercially made garments, when people are wider this way, the whole thing gets wider. It's like they take it like this. If they take, let's say, you have your schematic like this, the standard schematic like I was showing you from the book. Okay, and let's say this person is wider. It's like they just cut it right in half and they just make it wider, the whole thing. See? I didn't make a very good example. 
Let's do another one. This is how commercial garments are made. And so they kind of look like a tent. So they would just take this and carry it straight down to here and just make everything up here. This is the part that gets wider to make this wider. Does that make sense? Okay, let me see some more questions. 37 Vega Lira. Question front schematic. I understand about adjusting for ribbing around the neck. What is the allowance for the arm side? This arm side, um, this one here, I don't, for knitting, this is for knitting, I use the circumference of the armhole and the armhole depth. I do not give um, any extra depth because, let me go to me, when you have knitting, this is this is a knitted fabric, this is t-shirt material, but if you have knitting, the whole knitting hangs from this part right here. The whole weight of the garment, including the sleeves, hangs from the shoulder. This arm side was is the exact circumference of my armhole. Exactly, there's nothing extra. Because it's stretchy fabric, you still have plenty of room under here. It stretches, it moves, it's exactly, there's no extra. If you make extra, Let's say pull it down this way. If you make it extra long, then you end up with it pulling when you go to lift your arm up. Remember, this is not sewing. In sewing, you have a woven fabric that doesn't have any give. This is knitted fabric, and it has a lot of give. So I do really don't allow. Now, if you're making an outer garment, then yes, you need some ease in the length of the armhole so that you can wear a garment underneath. I hope that answers the question. If you are making a, um, but if you were asking, if that's not what you were asking, let's say you were asking about if you're going to do um, vest or a tank top, what is the width of this ribbing? It's your choice. Even the neck's your choice. Let's say you just want to do an I-cord bind off. That's going to be maybe a quarter of an inch. So you would just allow a quarter of an inch around here. Of course, this is totally customizable to how you want your neck to fit. I'm just giving you an example. I think the best thing to do is to go to your closet and try on a variety of garments and see how you like the necks, it's paying specific attention to the neck. And then you can lay, find the one you like, lay it down, and measure it. And then just draw that on your schematic. Remember, each one of these squares equals one inch, so it's really easy to put something on here. Let's see. Claudio asks, is it really possible to do it to do without losing it? I'm not sure. Car Barbie B question, knitting a cardigan, you also have to reduce width for ribbing. Yes, that's what we're going to talk about next. Very good. Did I miss anybody? Let's see, Sarah. May I ask how you judge that? What is that? Only because I'm a 34C, but can also use a 36B or a 38A, depending on how comfortable I want the bra to be. They each have the same cup size. I'm not sure what that question is. We're going to talk about the front opening for the cardigan. So what you drew one side was for the wide bust. Yes, exactly. Repost and K. How should we decide if we need bust shaping even when we do not need bust adjustment or arm side? You will know if you need bust shaping if the front of your garment, your front neck, your front neck, the, I'm stuttering, your length of the front garment is more than two inches longer than the back. So when you measure, from the back neck to the hip. Compare that to measuring from the back neck to the front hip. You measure from the front and the back. Let me show you a drawing. I have that here. You're going to measure from 
here to here and from here to here. So you're measuring the back length to the hip and the front length to the hip. And I've covered this in two of the previous live streams. If you want to go back and watch them, I've actually used live models to demonstrate this. If J is more than two inches longer than I, then the great whatever it is greater than two inches, you would need to make bus shaping. The two inches the, is because fat knitted fabric stretches on its own. So your bust just protruding from your body, you're going to cause a certain amount of stretch of the fabric before it actually causes the front of your garment to be shorter. And that's about two inches. So you really need to have quite a bit of difference in the front. Otherwise, if you add bust shaping, your front garment might end up being longer than the back of the garment. Okay. Barbara Murphy, and all of these, these types of questions that you're asking are in the tutorial. What is the minimum difference between bust two and shoulder width to not compensate for a larger bust? Two inches. If you're, if you're greater than two inches, I would do the compensating. If you're only two inches difference, I wouldn't do any compensating because the fabric is going to stretch. Shelly answered it. Very good. Thank you, Shelly. Awesome. Nina says, thank you, Suzanne. I hate it when those shoulders hang down too low with what you just described in the commercial garments or even some knitting patterns. Exactly. I will tell you, this has been a tremendous amount of work to try to put this in writing and demonstration so that it makes sense to you. It is a very complicated topic of adjusting the arm size and the sleeve cap shaping. And that's probably why no one ever addresses it because it is extremely difficult to try to put it in writing and pictures so that it is clear and understandable to the reader, okay? And that's why I do the written tutorial, the live streams, plus all the diagrams that Andre, Francois's husband does, Andre Monroe does all those diagrams for me and they are outstanding. Joanne, Joan Miller says, what if the difference is 2.25 to 2.5? Is it really necessary to compute a front arm side and a back arm side? That is a great question. And that is why I have a sloper on. And we're going to talk about the sloper. We'll get to it in a minute, okay? Oh, Claudio said he's losing his mind. <laughs> I hope not. Okay. So, um... <laughs> I'm going to move forward, okay? So let's look at the schematic again. Now, if you're putting doing a cardigan, you need to know how wide your button band is going to be. I like to do my button bands about one inch wide or one and a half inches wide. I'm gonna draw in a one inch wide button band here. So it's going to come from here to here and from here to here. And again, this will be negative space. Okay, so you're not going to be knitting in here. This is going to be added on later. This is the negative space. Okay, so now your real schematic that you're going to be drawing from and that you're going to put on your one inch graph paper, you could even take a, you know, a heavier line and put it around here so you don't accidentally copy the wrong lines. But you're going to take these lines that we've got on here now and you're going to transfer this information to one inch graph paper, gridded paper, gridded Pellon. Here is an example of gridded Pellon, and this is what I like to use, one inch graph paper. I'm just literally going to go through this exact same process, only put everything on here. Each square will be represented on here. I'm just gonna copy this to this. It is not hard to do. You start out the same way we did here, you start out with the center back, then draw your shoulders in, and you're going to draw this. And then, you, after you put it on the one inch graph paper, you need to allow um, um, seam allowance on all edges that are gonna be um, seamed or, or con con connected. For example, joined. This shoulder would need a seam allowance, so you would cut here. You'd allow 
the armhole is going to need a seam allowance. So when you go to cut out your gridded pellon or paper, you're going to need to add a seam allowance everywhere, including the bus start. You're going to add a seam allowance. The only place you don't need a seam allowance is across the bottom. Then you cut out your pellon or your white gridded paper. You can use paper bags, you can use anything, and you're going to lay it on your fabric. And what I have on is a jersey, it's a t-shirt fabric. You can use old t-shirts, you they have to have enough fabric. And you lay it down, you cut out your pieces, and you sew it together. Here's my bus starts, you can see my bus start right here. Here's my bus start. And you sew it together, and you put it on. And this is when you find out, do you need to make further adjustments in the arm side? Where is your bust in the right place relative to where your bust is? Do you like the way your shoulders are? See, I think this is, this is a previous one that I made. I made this about like 10 years ago. And I think my shoulders are a little bit wide. See this one here? This one's way out here, a little bit wide. I think the new one, which I'm going to be making one, I'm going to come in a little bit narrower for the shoulders. But the rest of it I pretty much like. I like the arm side. I like how it fits. I like the ease in this. Feels good. I might bring my neck down a little bit more. But you make all those changes on this. This is called the sloper. So if I wanted my neck to come down a little more, I'd literally take it off my body, cut out the neck opening the way I want it, try it back on, see if I like it. If the shoulders aren't sloped enough, you can pin them up, and I wanted to talk a little bit about that too. There's these little things, or you can use um, safety pins. These are just little spring clips, or you can use a clothesline, you know, clips, anything, pins, and you can adjust. If you think it's too much ease, you can bring the ease in and pin in the sides, you know. And then you take it off. And you transfer those changes to your schematic. And then the chances that your sweater is going to look good and feel good are going to be very high. This might take, you know, once you've drawn your schematic and then transferring it to the one inch gridded paper or pellon, cutting it out, cutting this out might take you two hours. If you don't have a sewing machine, you can baste it together by hand. You can use these little clips to just clip it together. You can use pins, you can use tape, you can staple it, anything that will connect the pieces together. And SJM Clarity says, question, how do you make a sloper for a negative ease sweater for, or do you not, if you want negative ease, you create your schematic with negative ease. And that is all in this tutorial. You create on this page here, we added how much ease, whether you want positive ease or negative ease. And then these are the numbers including the ease that you use to create your schematic. So if you had negative ease on here, your schematic would have the negative ease. You would create your sloper with negative ease. You would try it on. Do you like it? It takes a couple of hours. You know, it might take you several weeks to knit a sweater. It's better to know if it's going to fit, especially when you're starting from scratch like this and you're not following a specific pattern. And you put this on, it's trial and error, you make your adjustments on this, you cut it, do whatever you need to do to it to make it look the way you want it to look, and then transfer that information back to the schematic. And then what we're going to talk about next time, let's see how long have we been on here, 48 minutes, we're doing good because I still have to answer some questions. We're going to talk about using knitter's graph paper. Once you make this, and you've transferred your information back to your schematic, then you're ready to start figuring out where are the increases and decreases going to be, how are you going to do the shaping, and I'll also talk about doing increases and decreases in different stitch patterns. For example, I use my little swatch as an example. Let me go back to my hands here so you can see this. This is one of the, one, one of the things that I'm considering. This is a sample swatch of what I'm considering for my sweater.
So let's say when I get up around to the arm side, how am I going to manage that in this stitch pattern and still maintain my stitch pattern? I'm going to teach you how to do that. And we'll be discussing it in future live streams. How to do the button, how to center this, how to make it, and you certainly don't want one of these right over your bust point. You know, so we'll talk about all of that as we get ready to start knitting, okay? Okay, so Barbie says, question, if I put on my sloper, I feel it is a little bit too tight. If I measure one of my cardigans, it's exactly the same measurement as my sloper. What do I do? Well, it depends on the fabric that you're knitting your sloper out of. I've used t-shirt material. You cannot use muslin or a woven fabric because it has no stretch to it. You need to use a jersey fabric that's knitted or you can use old t-shirts and cut them out, okay? You have to use a like fabric. If you're making a knitted garment, you have to use a knitted fabric to make your sloper. 37 Vega Lira, question, will you be going over transferring the information from the sloper to the graph paper after the adjustments next week? Yes, in fact, I've got to make my sloper, and we can do that. We can go for that, transferring it back to the schematic, and then we'll talk about using that schematic and transferring the information to knitter's graph paper. And we only need to use knitter's graph paper for the shaping areas. We don't need to use it for the entire garment only for the arm side where it's shaped, the neck shaping, and the waist shaping, okay? And question, when you're trying to sloper made for someone else, what is the point we must really look at to be sure it's okay? I'm afraid to miss something. Um, if it's possible for them to try it on, that's the best thing to do, you know, and see what their opinion is of it. If they're a far distance away, that's more difficult, really, really hard. Um, and, and today, with this coronavirus and mailing things from one place to another is so iffy and time-consuming. But I'll tell you, we are working on this tutorial at a very slow pace because it's a very complicated... Um, uh, it's, it's a complicated pattern doing set in sleeve. That's why I saved this tutorial for the last one. You know, I have four sweater tutorials. The first one was the raglan sleeves. The second one was a yoke. The third was drop shoulder. The fourth is the set in sleeve because it is the most complicated. Question, for cardigan, do we subtract the width of one side of the button band from the front width of the sweater? Yes, let me go back to that. Great question, Joan. So you can see this is the button band, and this side of the sweater comes over cardigan, and this side, and the button band overlaps. So you only need to subtract one button band with the width of the total button band, because when they overlap on top of each other, it's just the width of one, because one is completely under the other. And that's something else I'm going to be teaching you when we go to doing buttonholes, placing the buttonholes in the button band, is how to do it so it doesn't gap and pull apart and not look attractive. Okay. Deb Roebuck says, I tag plus, plus boot camp equals awesome. Thank you so much. Yes, and so um, the boot camp is really coming along. That is just the most fun that I've ever had teaching. I'm meeting people from all over the world, and to see the improvement in the quality of people's knitting over the course of the boot camp is just amazing. It's very heartwarming for me and fun. Did I miss anybody's questions? Oh, here, Carol Corkin, what about shaping for a pot belly? Also, I had three questions above. Okay, so for a pot belly, you're going to do some short row shaping in here. Okay, I'll add that. You would have to figure out Let's just add it right now. You have to, again, figure out the difference in the length of the back. Let's go to this picture here. Okay, so you have to measure from the back neck to the bottom of the sweater, front neck to the bottom of the sweater. 
it, let's say you have four inches longer here. If it's just two inches or less, you don't need to do anything different. If it's greater than two inches, whatever it is greater than two inches, that's how much fabric you're going to need to add in here. And you would do short rows. Let me draw a picture. I actually have one here of the bus shaping. You can see this is an example of the bus shaping, and I kind of drew that on the schematic. But let's say that you want to add um, short rows to the belly. I'm just going to draw a rough schematic here. And we want to add short rows in this area here. We would start by doing the longest short row, then we would do one a little bit shorter, and then one a little bit shorter. That would give you six extra rows. If you're using worsted weight yarn, that would give you about an inch. If you need to make it down lower, then you start lower. And the first short row isn't going to go all the way to the edge. It's going to go within two or three stitches of the edge, but not to the edge, because you don't want to change the edge length. Then the next one would be here, and the next one would be here. If you have a really big belly, you might want to do two sets. So you'd do a set here and go up a couple inches and do another set. And that would add a couple inches. Okay. And um, Carol said she had some other questions. It's really hard for me to go back and find them. I have to scroll. Carol, I look up. I had three questions. Let me see. I'm scrolling. Question, if they are divided, I don't understand. I'm not sure what that, that's from Carol. Carol, after we make calculations using the chart, are the numbers divided by two? Looking at page 35, it looks like you did. So here on this, when we were measuring, like for example, measuring the uh, bust chest area, that's total circumference around the body. But when we're drawing our schematic, it, the schematic only represents half. So we have to divide this in two. Now, when we measure across the back shoulders up here, it's not going around. It's not a circumference. It's a straight line. So the shoulder width is 16.5. That's from here to here. We do not divide it by two. Anything that is a circumference where you're measuring around the whole body it's going to be divided by two on this diagram. Now let's talk about a sleeve. Your upper arm circumference is not divided by two. And then you're going to have your wrist circumference not divided by two, and you're going to connect these two lines. Then you're going to create your sleeve cap through the calculations that are in the tutorial. Whoops, that's off center. So you're going to have your sleeve cap, very off-center sleeve cap. But this is your upper arm circumference plus ease. It's not divided by 2. This is your wrist plus ease, not divided by 2. Let's also talk about a variety of sleeve shapes. The sleeve cap is always going to be the same for you once you figure out what your sleeve cap is, which is in the tutorial. But below the sleeve cap can be a, a wide variety of things. So let's say that you are very muscular and you have large biceps. So you might want the upper part of your sleeve to be come down perpendicular from the sleeve cap. And then here's your wrist. And then you could come in like this. That could be your sleeve shape. Or let's say that you have, you want the sleeve to be a full sleeve all the way down, it would come down like this, a full sleeve. And this is the full circumference from here to here. It's not divided in half because this will be folded in half. The sleeve will be folded in half. Let's say that you want this, but you want to have it gathered at the bottom. So then it would come in and you would have it gathered like this. So it'd be a full puffy sleeve. Or you can make a sleeve cap. So you would just cut it off right here and you would just have a sleeve cap 
You could have a short sleeve, you could have three-fourths length sleeve, whatever you want. And then you put it on your schematic. Okay, let me see if there's some more questions. Okay, if, you, if I missed you, please restate your question very specifically so I know what you're asking. Um, Sue McVicker says, chat, the chat stays with the video. When this goes uh, onto YouTube after the live is finished, and I record the chat so you can see all the chat, you can go back and watch it as if it's live. Question, for something like a princess seam, would the short rows be in the sides? Um, a princess seam. I'm not sure what you're asking. So if you have, this is what I consider a princess seam. Is this what you're considering a princess seam? That's not short rows. This would just be increases. You would be adding, or if you're working bottom up, these would be, you would work some decreases. And you could actually work your decreases and we'll talk about this more when we're going into the knitting. Right now, we just want to see, is the garment fitting you? But yes, these could be, you could have like gores, you know, where increased the stitches. So this is wider here, and as it goes up, it gets narrower. That's part of what we're going to be talking about. Um, Barbara Rossi, question, how do we sign up for December Boot Camp? Once I have everybody enrolled in the May boot camp, and let me see, Barbara, your name might be at the bottom of my list. Let me see. Yes, I have you down there as a possibility. I'm, I have to wait and see. I'm giving everybody till April 1st to pay for boot camp that starts in May. I have quite a few people on the waiting list. Barbara, you're one of those. You're near the top of the waiting list. You may get to move into the uh, May class. If not, once the May class is filled out, I'm going to create a sign-up list for the December class, and I'll be posting that on Ravelry and in Facebook, and you can sign up for it. Okay, Sue McVicker, Cat B, for example, if you need three inches to length, the number of short rows would be calculated by your row gauge. Yes, we're going to talk about all of that. Right now, we just want to see, does the garment fit? Once we have the, we know that the sloper fits, and we've transferred all the information back to our schematic, then we're going to figure out, how are we going to make this shape? And we have lots of possibilities. For example, in waist shaping, I love waist shaping because there's several things that we can do. Let's say that we want upper and lower waist shaping. So we're going to go like this. Duplicate that on here. Okay, so let's say we're going to do something like that. So here's the area that your waist shaping is between here and here. There are several things you can do. The easiest is to make decreases along the seam and then increases on both sides. Okay, that's the easiest thing to do. Another thing that you can do is instead of doing, because this would be on the front edge and the back edge, so there would be two in shaping lines, on the one on the front fabric, one on the back fabric, same here, so you end up with four shaping lines. Another way is to put the shaping lines in here and not on the edges at all. And I actually like these better. They look really nice. The third way is you have to know your stitch and row gauge. You would go down in needle size, maybe a couple needle sizes, and then back up to your working needle. So there's different situations where you would want to use each one. Let's say you have an all over lace pattern and you don't want to have increases and decreases right in the front of your garment in an all over lace pattern you would put them on the edge or you would change needle sizes let's say you have a really pretty cool cable pattern that you're doing these could actually look really cool like let's say your cable's going like this and you got a different little cable going here 
what would happen is you would just have a wider area between the cables here and it would they would come closer and then they would go up and it really looks cool very cool way shaping very very cool okay we're going to talk we have so much more to talk about but the first we have to find out what is our garment going to look like on our body okay before we get into these details because if we go straight into these details and it doesn't turn out to fit you're going to be very unhappy okay so it's this back schematic let's talk about the back schematic you're going to use the information from your front schematic minus any bus shaping and the neck now so I can draw another one right over this. I'm just going to copy it through the paper. I could see it. I can almost see it. Let me put it up to my screen. I'm just going to do the upper part. This is very crude. Okay. So I copied the upper. You may not need back neck shaping, and you're not gonna have an opening to your cardigan. What determines whether you need back neck shaping is the shape of your neck. And I went over that last week, let me do it again. I don't have my daughter here, but I'll demonstrate on me. So I have, this is called this curve. It's right here. This is normal, it's called a cervical curve, okay? And it's like a reverse C. If you have a cervical curve, you don't really need to have back neck shaping because what will happen is it will allow your garment to come up like this and hang down in the front. Have you ever had a garment do that, that it seems like it's constantly hanging down in the front? In that case, you don't need back neck shaping. The other is if you have a very straight neck, you have no cervical curve at all. You need back shape neck shaping because the back neck will pull. Do you see how it pulled up the front? When I put my neck back, do you see how this came up to the front? And it's going to make it feel like it's choking me. So if you have a very straight neck, you need back neck shaping to allow the front to come down so it doesn't feel like it's choking you. And you'll know if you're that person because all of your garments feel like they choke you. If everything you wear feels like it's choking you, you need back neck shaping. Okay? So other than that, let's go back to my hands. The back is going to look very similar to the front as far as, but no bust shaping, no back neck shaping, and no cardigan opening in the front. If you have waist shaping, you're going to add the waist shaping to it, just like here. Okay, you won't be adding any length to it because you're not adding bust shaping. Any other questions? Can you please explain bust darts in more depth? And what do you mean by more depth? Susan Marie. So, okay. When you are measuring, I'll start from ground zero. You first are going to measure the front neck. And let me go back to me again. It's very important where these parts are on your body. Remember last week? Where your neck comes down and joins the top of your shoulder. The highest point that you can see. This is not the front neck. This is not the, the, the top of the shoulder. It's the highest point that you can see. That's right there. Put your finger on it. Then turn and look at the side. Can you see that it's equivalent to the back neck, this bump on the back of my neck? It's the same. It's just straight over. Okay? So if you're going to measure the front, you start at that point. You measure from that point to the bottom of where your garment's going to be, not the waist. Then you measure from the back neck to the bottom of the garment in the back. If there's a discrepancy greater than two inches, like the front is more than two inches long, anything greater than two inches is going to come up and be added as bust shaping. It might be just half an inch. It might be an inch. And 
someone asked earlier, do you need to, if it's just such a small amount, do you need to compensate for it? Don't compensate for it. Make your sloper and see if you like your sloper. You know, see how it fits. Um, you can try it both ways. And if you uh, just baste your sloper together, it's real easy to pull out basting threads. Or you can use these, these little pins or safety pins. You can use tape, you know, whatever you want to connect the pieces together before you try them on. So then, once you figure out how much you need to add in your bust shaping, we'll go to this drawing here. Okay, here is an example of bust shaping. And this looks like it's, like, it's very exaggerated, okay? But this would add six, one, two, three, four, five, six rows of fabric. They're not being added at the sides. They're only being added at the front. Now, I have a really good teaching sample. Just a second. This is from Boot Camp 3, my Boot Through Camp 3 class, when we talk about um, short rows in great depth. And so I have this little example here. Here is the same thing, only I hand drew it, and I cut out these areas here. Do you see where I cut them out? So in reality, this knitting is going to be connected to here, and this is going to be connected to here, and it creates your bust. Can you see that? It's like half a heel. So it creates the bust. Okay? Is that a good visual? Does that help? Let me see. Any paper can be used to make the pattern. Yes. If the front is three inch larger than the back, do we make sloper with different arm size? You can, I would certainly try that. And all the directions for creating those arm size are in the tutorial. And I call those compound arm size. It's where the arm size in the front is different than the arm size in the back. What if you have a dowager hump? That is, my neck is much more forward than my back. Um, I don't think you need back neck shaping. It would just make it worse, okay? You might, and in this case, for a uh, set-in sleeve, with seamed shoulders, you don't need to add short rows at the back neck either. If you were working a, a yoke or raglan sweater, yes, you could add short rows at the back neck, but for this, you don't need that. KN, for the front schematic, I need to draw the curve where I need the opening. For the neck schematic, if I don't need back neck shaping, it will be just a straight line like you drew. Yes, exactly. Champ. Question, don't you mean for this particular shape because the back is already high, it might be worth comparing this back neck to other styles. The thing is, make your sloper and try it on. That's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. Okay. So Harold says, "If can, can you tell me what is the date of the la latest iTag file? Um, it was last week. The one for this week hasn't come out yet. We're still working on a little fine details about it. It's really going to be coming up real soon. Uh, Francis Davis says, question, if we don't have t-shirt fabric, can you use, simply use the Pellon? No, because the Pellon has absolutely no give. You need something that is as stretchy as your knitting. Yes then you don't want fusible, fusible interfacing. And Francis Davis, wouldn't you need to allow for the one-inch ribbing around the neck? Yes. Yep. Okay, how are you guys doing? This is a lot of information, isn't it? It is a lot of information, but I think and we may lose people along the way, but I'm trying to be as visual about it as possible so that you can get it from every angle. You know, some people need it to learn this way, some people learn better that way. I'm trying to give the information in a variety of ways so that everybody can get it. 
And the next section should be coming out, you know, shortly. Carol, if using an old t-shirt, can we just pin it or just take it apart and then pin? Absolutely, but you're going to need to be able to transfer the information from the t-shirt to your schematic. You don't have to know how to sew. You know, putting a, it's, if, you can, if you can weave in the ends on your ribbing, I mean, weave in the ends on your knitting, you can baste two pieces together or just use pins. These are the coolest little pins. Can you see them? They're little grippers. And you can just put two pieces of fabric, to, you know, here's my, here's my swatch. I'm going to put two sides and you just clip it together. It clips right on there. It'll hold it together. Okay. Don't get discouraged because the fun part's going to be getting. What I really like teaching is the shaping in the different stitch patterns. That's really fun. And you know, this is all a finessing your knitting. It's finessing your knitting and, and being in control of what you're making. And it makes you feel very, very powerful, especially when it turns out okay. The compound arm size is in the current document. Question, do you take apart that sloper to get the measurements on the pell on paper? Yep, when you're done, you're going to take it apart and transfer everything back to your paper. So when you're sewing on the sewing machine, use a really long stitch. You don't need to, you know, you're not doing this as a permanent thing, okay? You'll all get there. You'll all get there. And you know what's going to be amazing when we start seeing people's sweaters. That's, to me, to see all the things that people have made from my previous tutorials is so heartwarming. And to see that they fit people, that's very cool. Okay, I'm going to let you go. We'll talk to you later. See, it'll be same time, same place next week. Feel free to share this with other people. And you do not have to be doing this tutorial to watch these videos, to watch these live streams. You do not have, but it helps, but you don't have to. You're still going to pick up tips and tricks and things to learn. Okay? Okay. See you later.